Welcome to Nightline once again. I am Mary Sloan along with my daughter. Tony Suchka. Let you say your own name, huh? <laughs> and we are so glad you tuned in tonight, whether it's by TV or there's all kind of ways to join us by Facebook. Go to WGS TV on Facebook and just click on the program. It's already on, and when you open it up, you don't stare, you share. Share. <laughs> and I've noticed our Facebook Nightline Live with Mary and Tony is growing. Uh huh, it and is. Just we'll have almost a thousand followers, and the yeah, more of that, then the more <laughs> the gospel is shared and gets out there. That so it's right. exciting. Got a great night tonight. We've got some good guests. You're going to enjoy them. And they're standing over there, and they're going to be ready to just give you a big wave in just a minute. But I'm going to start with the first one, okay? All right. We have got with us tonight Dr. John and Rebecca Polis with Revival Fellowship International. Come on. Y'all looking good over there. <laughs> and right beside them, we've got Narvis Hart, and uh, she's with the Glow and Easley, a Glow they Lighthouse. All, they all know Narvis, yeah, right? I think so. <laughs> and who else we got? Then we meet? have Jerry and Stephanie Blassengame. I've known them for a long time, and yes. they're here to share some of their ministry and also his new book. Yes. So he just had a book signing this week, actually. I so I'm um, very exciting to have them on. We're going to be talking about their book tonight, Dr. John Polis is I know, and we, we have some giveaways tonight. Yes. We do have um, Jerry Blessing Games uh, book, Reclaimed, that we're going to be giving away later mm -hmm. in the show, so you have to stay tuned for that. And Dr. John's new book, Victorious, he's going to be telling us all about some good stuff in this book tonight. I love the title, Tony, Victorious. I know, and that, that reminded me of my word for the year that I had um, was it last year? No, it was the year before. Victory. Um, Just love that. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about his book and what he has in there. Well, you got a scripture for us? I do, every week. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. And it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And you know where I got that scripture from? I was uh, reading Dr. John Polis' book, who is on with us tonight, and uh, he had that scripture in there, and I said, that's going to be our scripture tonight, because... When you, you know, I was just thinking about victorious uh, living. Our topic tonight is victorious living. And uh, when you realize the grace through Jesus Christ and His shed blood, what is that? It's victorious living, mm -hmm. isn't it? I'm not going to steal all Dr. John's stuff, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> He's got a lot to say. And when we think about victorious living, you know, and you realize healing that is ours because of the stripes that Jesus took. That's victorious living. I tell you what, I like to walk around healed because it, it ain't no fun to hurt, you know. And we it's like not, to be... and, and I've learned that when you still, when you're believing for that healing mm -hmm. and you're still feeling the physical of it, I'm saying, because I'm believing for healing for me right Amen. now. And yes. I'm saying every morning, thank you, Jesus, for my healing. We have to speak that You're out. You're walking there's, in victory. Yes, there's power <laughs> they in those words, right? Because of him. <laughs> and then also, we don't walk in fear, but by faith. And that can be hard to do, you know? Because right. faith is not something that we can see that's tangible. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we have to trust the Lord. It's something that we have to really trust in Him when we walk that out. Yes. Yes. Um, this is a, something I was, have been studying in Galatians with a group of women. In Galatians 5, uh, I was reading, and this just stood out to me like no other time that I've read it. And I have read it before, and I started scripture doodling. I sent them a picture of my scripture doodle. <laughs> it's Galatians 5, 14. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, it's so simple, but when mm. I read that, that day, I thought, wow, are we loving others like we love ourselves? Well, some people can't love others because they don't, they don't love, love themselves. themselves. Yeah. And it, it all goes back to their identity. Who mm -hmm. are they? They don't know who they are in Christ. You've got to know He is our identity. Yeah. So 
I, I love all of these things that um, you had yes. brought out. Um, and I was just looking uh, another thing about John, Dr. Polis's book, John, Dr. John, we call him, Victorious, but he says on page 56, and we're going to hear a lot about it tonight, God is for you, God is in you, and God is with you. And you know what? When we realize all of that, we, we realize that we can be overcomers, we can be productive, we can make people aware of God, lead people to Jesus, make disciples, and we can be more than a conqueror. And God has called us to do. You know, we don't, we don't get to heaven by works but we're going to have some works while we're here after we experience that salvation through Jesus Christ, you know, because it says by faith, by grace are you saved. You know, it's, it's a gift, and we don't go to work for that because it is a gift. But we, I wrote a song not long ago that said, he sat down, now I'm going to stand up, you know. we got to stand up and do something, you know. we got to do. Our, um, one of the pastors at our church spoke this week, and I thought it was so good. He gave the analogy of track runners running the relay races and he says as generations go by he said you have that baton and if you don't yes. run your race and hand that baton off to the next generation then you've not done your job right and you got to stand there ready to give that baton to the next generation and that is you know we don't just sit we take what we've learned and we walk out what we've learned so we can take that baton right. mm -hmm. and hand it down to that next generation so that they can walk out the right. same thing. And nobody can fulfill your purpose. You have to fulfill your own purpose. Right. We are so unique that we all have a different thumbprint, don't we? I tell people that <laughs> you are thumb body. <laughs> I thought that was cute. I heard a, got a pastor say that one day, you are thumb body <laughs> because you're unique within yourself. Nobody is like you. Right. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more from them. I know that they're just a well, you know, they of are. what the Lord has and wisdom in them. And um, I just never forget the first time I heard Dr. Rebecca Polis speak. Um, at one of Heart of Hannah's mm -hmm. women's conferences, and I was so blessed by that. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from um, Jerry and Stephanie Blassingame. This book, um, it's about a story of second chances, and, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't even realize he spent a lot of time in prison, and mm -hmm. the Lord has taken his life, mm -hmm. changed it, and um, I'm just really looking forward to hearing more about this. I know that they, we could probably spend the next five minutes telling all the things that Stephanie and Jerry Blassingame have done. <laughs> they have big hearts, and they've been involved in a lot and blessed so many people. And so he bought Heart of Hannah from. Uh, I know there's a, such Marvis. a neat connection I here know. tonight, like it is. Uh -huh. with Heart of Hannah, and you know how nervous. It, and that's why we had to have her here too. Like she's just kind of the nucleus. <laughs> she's bringing all the dots of all together. of these mm -hmm. guests here tonight. I know. I know. So. And you know, I, I remember the first time um, my sister Edith heard Dr. Rebecca preach. We were like, "Wow." Where did she come from? You know, just awesome messages that she would deliver. But I remember a statement Edith made about Dr. Rebecca Polis said she's a hidden treasure <laughs> waiting for somebody to just realize what's within her. And I think that has what has happened. Their ministry is exploding all over the world, Tony, in all the nations. So it's going to be interesting to find out about that too. I am looking forward to it. <laughs> now, I know that tonight you're going to be singing some songs as well, and you're right. going to be singing. Um, are these some of your newer songs that you no, have? No, actually, I didn't pick out one of my songs for tonight. I uh, sang a couple of those recently, but uh, singing somebody else's song. Well, right. I know everyone always says, we love it when Mary sings, so she's going to be singing tonight. You're and just saying that, don't you? No, we've actually had people to <laughs> call in and say, we love it when Mary sings. And speaking of calling in, we want to hear from you tonight. We have right. prayer partners back there tonight waiting for your call. They're there to pray with you. They're there to celebrate with you. And if you do not know the Jesus that we're talking about as your personal Savior, they're there to pray with you. And um, you can know him tonight and accept him into yes. your life and into your heart. Mm -hmm. We also have Jackie Christofferson who mm -hmm. is going to bless us with some songs. songs. She's um, yeah. an anointed worship leader 
and she has a passion for worship and music and um, I love her voice. Her daughter's also been on and sang before right, and very voice. talented. Well, guess what, Tony? What? I got me a new phone. Oh, look at you. <laughs> She's a high roller. <laughs> I thought, I thought uh, I said, my other phone works fine. I can call on it. I can do Facebook. I can do this. What's wrong with it? So one day I tried to load an app that I absolutely needed on my phone. It said, your phone won't take this. <laughs> it was time to go shopping for a phone, but hey. I know, and if it um, declines Voxer, we're out. We're throwing it out the window at that point. Oh, That's our it's ways, got to have Voxer. Our means of communication That's on right. there. <laughs> oh, I don't know what we'd do without that. Well, I am going to release you to okay. go sing your song. Tell us what song you're singing you're first. You're the only one. You're the only one. Mm -hmm. Did you write this one? No, I no. didn't. No, okay. Uh -uh. Well, you write them all. You write all I your know, songs. I know, but I decided to sing some other songs tonight <laughs> that I didn't write. <laughs> all right. Well, you go get ready for I that. I will. I will. And if you are just joining us, I hope that you stay tuned. We've got Dr. John and Rebecca Polis with us tonight sharing about his book, Victorious. We're going to be giving that book away way later in the hour. We also have Narvis Hart. She's going to be sharing a little bit about a glow. And we have Jerry and Stephanie Blassengame sharing about his book, Reclaimed. So stay tuned. We have a lot. And, and also Jackie Christofferson will be singing with us tonight as well. So I hope that you enjoy my mom singing her song, You're the Only One. <laughs> You're the only one, the only one I need. You're the only one, and you're worthy to receive power and praise, honor and thanks for all that you have done. Father, you're the You're worthy to receive power and praise, honor and thanks for all that you have done. Father, you're the only one. You're the only one. The only one I need. And you're the only one. Father, you are my reward, and you're the only one, you're the only one, the only one I the need, one I, need. I can't make it without you, you're the only one, and you were you have 
you're the lily of the valley. You're the bright and morning star. You're the fairest of 10,000. And you're beautiful. And I adore you. You're my refuge. You're my strength. And you're the only. You're the only one. Thank you, Mom. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I believe she'll be singing um, a little bit more later in the show. I wanted, I was getting some, um, we see Edith is watching from Florida. She's tuning in to see her friends tonight. <laughs> also see um, my friend, Joanna Butler. Her, my, Joanna is in Israel and her mother-in-law is in town, Harriet. Thank you for watching. She watches from Mississippi every week, she says. So when you have it on Facebook and you share it, people can watch it from all over the world. So we appreciate you guys tuning in on Facebook. Marsha is watching, Mom, Mom's friend Marsha. So anyway, we love to see all of you on there and say hello to us. I want to welcome our guests here. We have Dr. John and Rebecca Polis. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. It's a blessing to be yes. um, I was going to read a little bit so that our viewers can get to know you guys a little bit about your background and where you come from. Dr. John Polis holds a BA in Biblical Theology with more than 30 years in ministry as an apostle to the body of Christ. He is the founder of Revival Fellowship International, ambassador uh, apostle with the International Coalition of Apostolic Leaders. We could go on and on with lots of things that you have here. Um, a U.S. Marine Vietnam veteran, Dr. John, has authored 11 books which have been translated into six different languages. Dr. John carries and imparts the Elijah anointing, preparing churches to disciple the nations to mature sons and daughters of Christ. Thank you for being here. I feel honored, honored to have you here. And mom, you can share a little bit more about Dr. Rebecca here. Yeah. Um I want to read a little bit more about this woman sitting beside you, okay? Let's do. <laughs> uh, Dr. Rebecca Polis has happily served the Lord since accepting Him in 1975. She has functioned as a prophetic teacher both on the local and international scene, been on a radio and TV host, uh, and as a prophetic teacher both on the local and international scene. Oh, I think I read that. i got to go down one. And served as a co-apostle with her husband, Dr. John, as a church planter and pastor. She and her husband have been married 42 years. <laughs> or has that changed? <laughs> yeah. How long have you been married now? 45 now. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, All right. Let's give them another hand. <laughs> <laughs> been married 45 years yeah. and have... Now, the children haven't changed. You've got four children. Two That's four. right. Right, yes. <laughs> eight grandchildren. Oh, wow. eight grands. Yes. I call them grands. That's what they are. They are. She's considered a spiritual mother to the, uh, to the Revival Fellowship International, an apostolic fellowship represented in the U.S. and in five countries. Her greatest desire, though, is to serve the Lord in mentoring, mothering, and bringing maturity to the body of Christ. Ooh, wow. Wow. You're a busy woman, aren't you? I love it all. I do. Yeah. Well, I told Dr. John I, uh, we're going to really get into some depth with him, but uh, I thought we'd just start out with uh, you, Dr. Rebecca. Okay. I'll never forget meeting you uh, through Heart of Hannah and uh, mm -hmm. being able to receive all that word that you just poured into us and made a big difference in our lives. But I wanted to go back several years uh, before you were ever a Christian now. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, we'll go back just a little bit a little now. Bit. I want you to tell everybody who you were saved under. Jim Baker. Jim you Baker. know, we were what they called old hippies. Do you remember what a hippie was? During the Jesus movement? The Jesus uh -huh. movement, yeah, but that was... We when I heard that, I couldn't Jesus. visualize y'all being in oh, the Jesus yeah. movement. <laughs> yeah, well, this was even before we were sinners. We were in yeah. the hippie movement. Yeah, the Of course, hippie. the drugs, the alcohol, all the crazy mm. living, all of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then... You, after a while, you get tired of sin. Right. At least I did, and I'm sure everybody that has saved, you know, been saved has gotten to that point. And so one night I turned on the television, and there was Jim Baker, and we were in such bad shape. I didn't have a, I didn't have a phone. Mm 
I didn't have a dime to call in. And so, sure enough, uh, you know, I prayed that prayer. And when he came home and I said, I prayed that prayer, I got saved. And, of course, he looked at me like, what was that? And I wasn't even sure what that was. And I didn't have a dime to call. Mm -hmm. So it was years and years and years later, maybe 30 years later, we were in at a, a Logos graduation, Bible college graduation down in Jacksonville, Florida. And who was right in front of me but Jim Baker. Wow. I was so excited. His wife was getting a degree in broadcasting. Yes, oh. that's right. I forgot. Mm -hmm. And I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, you don't know, <laughs> but you're responsible for me being here wow, tonight. Wow, that is amazing. And I think how many people watch this show, maybe never call in, maybe never write a letter, never yeah. send a dime, but their whole lives are changed. Mm -hmm. yes. And I know I've watched wonderful people of God and never called them, never let them know what a change. So I thank God for the work that you all do here. Yeah, yeah your lives. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you're bright. I came in here tonight and just felt life <laughs> flowing. And I said, oh, this is going to be Aww. good. <laughs> well, that makes fun. me feel really good anyhow, the, the, the life and the yeah. youth and all that. That's huh? it. Oh, yes. Now, you actually won your husband to the Lord, didn't you? Yes, I did. Oh, that's remarkable. Pure grace. <laughs> we... We were in that crazy lifestyle, and we were traveling around in a red van. Um, I forget it was it was candy apple red with red shag carpet. Can your mind go back that uh, far? I've red been there. Shag? Believe me, we had a van like that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was it. Chrome reverse wheels, chrome pipes, television inside, and a dog that infested it with fleas. And so <laughs> that was fun. But we had such a time, and we were traveling all over, and he finally. We pulled into my uh, brother's home in Virginia Beach. He was a professor at a college there. And what did you pray? Well, it started with me watching her life and seeing the big change in her. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was pretty full of demons. Mm -hmm. And I came home one day, and she's telling me about Jesus. And this is really what turned me. I threatened her. I threatened her life, you know, with a weapon. And I told her, if you mention Jesus to me one more time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you to see him. <laughs> and she just looked at me and said, you think you can scare me with the idea of going to heaven? And when I saw no fear, then that impacted me. Wow. And I said, something's real. And that's when I began my search. And I prayed the sinner's prayer in my van. I was smoking a big old Colombian joint and drinking a can of Miller's High Life, listening to Jeff Van Holt on Black Sabbath on an eight-track cassette. And, and she's in the, in the house with her family. I'm sitting in the van, and I'm praying all the prayers I can remember from childhood. Nothing was working. And I finally said, God, whatever you did to Becky, do it to me. And something flipped on the inside of me. I was born again. I dumped out that big bag of pot in my sister-in-law's front yard, went and rang the doorbell and said, I need a Bible. Let's go to the bookstore. And that was the beginning. Wow. But her life impacted me. And then from then on, you you learned how to help the Christian grow, didn't you? Yes. But I, I, I want you to expound on something I read. What's the difference in being a, a disciple and a believer? To me, to become a, a Christian, a believer, is to make Christianity my belief, mm -hmm. as opposed to like Hinduism or any other world religion. To be a disciple right. means to make Christ my life. And there's That's a big right, difference. Yeah. For Christ to become your life, like Paul said, when Christ was our life is revealed. I want to live the way Christ lived, in other words. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe in Jesus, but their goal in life is not to live the way Jesus lived. And that's a disciple. Right. That's good. Mm -hmm. that's good. And you've done a lot. You guys, um, you've pastored, mm -hmm. you've evangelized, you've mm -hmm. traveled, you've, you've, looks like, open Bible colleges mm -hmm. with leadership training. You've mm -hmm. done a lot. Mm -hmm. How did you go from you know, expanding your ministry to just from pastoring to traveling all over and evangelizing. You know, uh, we started pastoring in 1980 in a little Pentecostal church in Fairmont, West Virginia. And for three years, we pastored and taught the Word of God and to a small group of people, it grew very slow. 1983, I had a, an encounter with the Lord. I was walking in prayer in my sanctuary. And I walked through five anointings, teacher, evangelist, pastor, prophet, apostle. And I knew... Each step, the anointing changed. I knew what it was. I realized I'd walked into the ministry of apostle. I was 1983. 
that year I got invited to Africa for the first time. We opened a Bible school. What it was was really the apostolic anointing that came into our life that exploded us, took us from pastoral to apostolic international ministry. It was just the grace of God. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. We what? just have ran chasing God, keep trying to keep <laughs> up with, with Him. Well, I know we've got a lot more to cover with you guys, mm -hmm. but before we continue with Dr. John and Rebecca Polis, we have Jackie Christofferson singing Back to My First Love. Mm -hmm. matters but you 
Beautiful song, beautiful voice. If you're just joining us tonight, we have Dr. John and Rebecca Polis with us tonight. They have an international ministry and uh, all over. They just evangelized their apostle to the nations. And um, he's written a book called Victorious. And guess what? We're going to have a giveaway with this book right Giving now, aren't away. we? To the first caller, get on the phone now and let us know that you want Dr. John's book, Victorious, and we'll get that out to you because you're going to enjoy it. I've been reading it, and it's just a great book. But there was some things in here that I thought we would highlight with, with Dr. John tonight about his book. And um, Dr. John, the book is about part of it, facing the battle, fighting the battle, and finishing the battle. Now, let's start with facing the battle. Okay. Well, in the book, I talk about the fact that you have to face your battles because they're not going away. Right. And Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation, you'll have trouble. And we need to know who the troublemaker is, <laughs> which is Satan, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of confusion around who does what. And when Jesus cleared it up, when he said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So we need to know the devil's a troublemaker. And we need to know that as long as we're in this world, we're going to have trouble from the, from the devil. And so we have to learn to face it. You know, King David's warriors refused to get out of the trench and face Goliath. They had all the equipment, they were trained, but they, they wouldn't get out and face the fight. And the difference was David was willing to face the battle. Mm -hmm. The sooner we learn to face it, the sooner we're going to overcome it. Step mm -hmm. of faith. That's huh? good. Step of mm -hmm. faith. That's yeah, because good. the trouble's not going away. You know, Satan's the god of this world, the Bible says. And even Paul wanted to escape the battle in 2 Corinthians 12 mm -hmm. when he said, Lord, take this thing from me. And the Lord said, sorry, Paul can't do it because I have to do two things. Number one, I have to take the devil off the planet. And it's not time to take him off. Or I have to take you off the planet. Wow. And I don't want to take you off the planet. I need you here. Wow. So you're going to have to face it. But the good news is, he said, I'm going to give you sufficient grace yes. to face whatever you have Thank to face you, so you'll be an overcomer. So face that battle. Face it. Number face one, it. people, mm -hmm. face the battle yeah. now. Whether it's sickness, whether it's poverty, whether it's mental torment, mm -hmm. whether it's a relational problem, whatever it is, you have to face it because... Well, in my book, I say that God is with you. That's why you can face your battles because you're not facing it alone. And I know you and Dr. Beckles face some battles too, I'm sure. Many. Huh? <laughs> well, you can't be in the ministry for 40 years and not face a few battles. It's 40 years. Especially ago. going overseas. Huh? Sure. Oh. We, have, we have fought our battles physically, financially, mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, I went through a battle uh, uh, several years ago that I really didn't talk that much about, but it was mental. I mean, I was attacked by a demon and was having panic attacks. And the devil said, now I've been to Vietnam, I've been in the war zone. I've traveled all over the world, preached the gospel. And then all of a sudden I start having panic attacks and I can't get on an airplane. Wow. It just hit me out of I nowhere. Know the food. <laughs> I couldn't get on an elevator. Yeah. I mean, if I've battled this thing for two years and the devil said, you're done. You're not gonna travel no more. Wow. And I, I had to face that. I had to say, no, devil, I'm, I'm going to face it, live or die, sink or swim. We're going to face it. And I'm going to do what you're telling me I can't do. And so see, that happened after you'd been in ministry? Oh, once? many years. We're just talking five years ago. But what he knew is that you were strong in the things that you already, so he's going to try to creep in somewhere. That's right. He thought, oh, I can't get him with, you know, the word of what he knows. So right. let me just get him with this little small thing that mm -hmm. might put him in step back. Yeah. yeah, the mm -hmm. panic, the traveling, the you know, yes. yeah. something that you know is not in your control. When we're all in an airplane, we're kind of at the mercy of the pilot's skills. That's, you know? that's true, that's true. <laughs> so, you know, he tries to creep in wherever he can. He, he goes about seeking whom he may devour, looking for a place. Mm -hmm. Well, I went through a couple of years. Nobody could understand. Rebecca couldn't even understand the darkness that I was in. It was the worst experience of my life. Yes. But I kept speaking the word. You mentioned that earlier. First Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, completely, spirit, soul, and body, and preserve you blameless on his coming. Faithful is he that promised also will do it. Yes. And so I just speak that every day. Lord, I thank you yes. that I'm whole, spirit, soul, and body. Soul is your mind, will, and emotions. My mind is whole. My emotions are whole. 
I would declare that. And one day, I'm standing in front of the sink in my apartment at the time, and because we move around a lot. And I spoke that word, and it was like something went ping right off the side of my head. I felt it snap. That demon that had been binding my mind just was snapped off of me like that. And my mind came back clear, you know, Amen. back mm -hmm. doing everything and more. You know, I never, I never slowed down, but it was, it was a battle. Well, you know, I heard another preacher, now that we're talking about this with you today, even today, say he went through the very same thing, depression, mm -hmm. anxiousness. He went to his wife and said, I've been in ministry all my life. What do I do? And she said, you do what you know to do, and we know what it is. <laughs> right. It's a spiritual battle. It, it is. Yes. We've got to face it. Yes. I, it I've, I've had demons attack me in different ways over the years and, and uh, come into my room and, and grab my chest like a, like a, I describe it like an eagle's talon and just try to rip my heart out and cause me a heart problem. I've had three heart attacks. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I had I the first one. I was 35. Yeah, a lot of people don't because I never, I, I'm 69 years old. I take no medication. Uh, I have no health concerns. I fought those battles mm -hmm. by facing them. Well, do well, or die. That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Your next chapter, in chapter two, you talk about fighting the battle. Right. Mm -hmm. And you focus on David and Moses. Right. So, how important is it how to fight the battle? How do we fight these battles? Well, the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. We fight with the, the weapons God gave us. That's why the promise, no weapon formed against you, will prosper the premise of my book. Mm -hmm. You can have victory because we have greater weapons. Mm -hmm. That's why no weapon that Satan forms. Will, will prosper. The word prosper means come to fruition. Mm. I like to say it like this. Satan can start the fight, but he can't finish it. You can finish it. Oh, start it, but you finish good. it. I need that rocky dun, 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 yeah. dun. Exactly. <laughs> that music with that. We have the weapons. Uh, mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 6 that you quoted earlier, you know, taking the sword of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Most of those weapons are defensive. They really show you how Satan's going to attack you. Like the breastplate yes. of righteousness. Well, that tells you Satan's going to come with condemnation. Mm -hmm. Or the shoes of peace. Satan's coming with strife. Mm -hmm. You know, or the, the helmet of hope. Mm -hmm. He's coming with discouragement. Mm -hmm. All of those weapons show you how Satan's going to come. But the one that is offensive is, of course, the Word. And speaking the Word and acting on the Word. That's a big thing. In my book, I talk about face the battle, fight the battle. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that God is going to allow you to fight some battles. Moses fought uh, Pharaoh ten times. And I mentioned that in the book. Well, I used to think, God, why don't you like Pharaoh? You keep hardening his heart. And God said, it wasn't about Pharaoh. It was about Moses. I was developing in Moses wow. the endurance uh -huh. that he needed to do his job. Because one day he was, yeah. he's going to lead all those millions of, of Hebrews out and he's going to face a lot of battles that he went through in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. God used, used Pharaoh mm -hmm. ten times to toughen up Moses. Yeah. Same thing with David. He fought the lion. He fought the bear. Mm -hmm. And that's what made him ready for the giant. So I tell people you've got to face it and fight it because even though God lets you fight some horrific battles, he's let me fight some horrible battles. But you don't know the giants that's in your future, but he does. Mm -hmm. And when, when you're going through a battle, you have to say, Lord, what am I, why am I facing this? And what do I need to learn? Because oh you're letting me fight this for a reason. You know what's in my future. David didn't know Goliath was there when he fought that bear. Mm -hmm. He didn't know right. a lion was coming. Mm -hmm. But God knew Goliath was there. And so he lets us fight battles. That's why we have mm -hmm. to face it. Fight it by faith with the Word of God, believe and speak and act on God's Word, and you'll finish every battle. He finished the line, he well, finished I'm the battle. I'm waiting bear. on that finish. Come on now. <laughs> and then Tell he us finished. a little bit about finishing. Well, you know, when he cut David's or Goliath's head off, that was the end of Goliath. Mm -hmm. Goliath was never coming back. He finished it. And that's, I've finished that devil in my life that was tormenting my mind. Mm -hmm. I finished those physical battles, mm -hmm. put an end to them in my life so that they'll never return again. And, and we can do that mm -hmm. yeah. with God's Word. God's yeah. Word is the final authority. Love it. Yes. Love it. Yeah. Well, Mom, you're going to go get ready to sing. And while you get ready to sing, I'm going to keep talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, in your final chapter in your book, it talks about finishing strong. Yes. If we face the battle, we fight the battle. How do we finish strong? 
Well, you've gained a strength through all those battles that you fought. You're now strong in faith. You know, you're strong in your anointing. Mm -hmm. You're strong in walking in love. You're strong in your right standing with God. All of that armor that you've learned to wear and fight those battles, you've become strong in all of those areas. That's mm -hmm. why he said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finishing strong, there's two things. Number one, he said, be strong in the Lord. To me, that is knowing my position in Christ. Mm -hmm. I have to be strong in my position to know I'm a son of God and I have an equal standing with the Father that Jesus has. I'm in Christ. What does that mean? I have to be strong in that knowledge. Second thing, and in the power of his might, I have to be strong in the Holy Spirit's work in my life. I have to be so surrendered to him and yielded to him that his strength mm -hmm. is, yeah. is what's prevailing in my life. So that, that's how you finish strong, by, by being strong in the Lord, in the knowledge of who you are in Christ, mm -hmm. and in the power of his might. You've cultivated the anointing in right. your life. You're moving now not just in, in one gift, but in all of them, all nine gifts and of all the Holy of these, Spirit. These situations that we go through in life, it stretches our faith. Yes. We get stronger and yes. we can trust and lean into him more because he stretched our faith through that. That's yes. true can only rely on him. You know, one of the things I talk about with, with health and healing, mm -hmm. people need to develop their faith in this area. By facing that battle, if you have a headache, overcome it with the Word of God. Try to avoid running to the medicine cabinet for every little thing. Most Christians do that. They, they, they don't develop their faith in a minor illness then a serious illness comes, they're not ready. And if a terminal illness comes, yes. this, is, this is what happens mm. in the body of Christ. I'm very, very strong on this and teach this continually. Start using your faith on the small things mm -hmm. because your faith grows as you overcome. And use the natural things he's given us. That's <laughs> right. And one day when, giant, when the giant comes, when Goliath comes, you're ready for him. Yeah, yes. amen. Well, we're going to be back with them in our last segment. So enjoy the song with my mom, Mary Sloan, Something About My Praise. The flowers in the field They burst forth with the blue And the winds, they seem to whisper, he's alive. Oh, and even the trees lift their branches high to the heavens above in perfect harmony with the creation. But there's just something about my praise He loves And there's just something about the way I speak His name When I say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus He's my precious Jesus. And although hosannas and hallelujahs, they're sung to him by angels above. There's just something about my praise. There's just something about my The Lord has been so real to me. He's given me a special kind of love. And I have more to thank my Father for than all the angels in heaven above. For In that crimson stream of love, 
And that makes my praise just a little something special to the Father up above. And just because I'm His child, there's something about my praise. Oh, He loves. And there's just something about the way I speak His name when I say Jesus, Jesus. And all the hosannas and hallelujahs, they're sung to him by angels above. There's just something about my brain, something about my praise. There's just something about. Jesus loves There's something about my praise He loves Thank you mom for that um, song that's a beautiful song something about my praise we have here Dr. John and Rebecca Polis, and he's been talking about his book, Victorious, yeah. and he talked about we face the situation coming at us, we fight it, and then we finish strong through the power of the Holy Spirit in us and the knowledge of the Word of God that we have in us. So I think that's all just great to be reminded of how we walk through things and if we don't have the word of God in us how can we fight right. the battles that come at us you know yes. how do we get stronger how does our faith grow when we aren't facing it fighting it exactly. and finishing strong Absolutely. I like that I like Absolutely. that we also have my sweet aunt, Narvis Hart. Beautiful. You look beautiful in blue. I have to say that. It's my sister. <laughs> You're kind of the <laughs> nucleus here. Um, why don't you share with us how you came to know Dr. Rebecca and Dr. John Polis and how you guys connected? Well, I met um, Dr. Rebecca 18 years ago. Our, my mother, your grandmother, she said to me, she said, you know, there's a lady on Channel 16 <laughs> that is, uh, she has a program on there. And she said, you need to have that lady. And I thought, well, you know, I, I like to know who I'm having, you know. <laughs> you know, you like to know a little bit about her. Right. And uh, so I called her and I asked her to send me some tapes. And I listened to her. It was a long just, time ago. Tapes. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> and I, I just... I, I just felt that anointing from her. I knew that I was to have her at that conference, and it was at Lake Jim Luska. It was mm -hmm. my 50th birthday, <laughs> so you can add that up. I'll be uh, 68 next month. <laughs> you just told your age, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> People can't so, add that fast enough. Hey, I, I thank God for every year. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, she spoke that year, and I mm -hmm. tell you, just ever since then, we have just, our relationship has grown and uh, with Dr. John and they have just been a covering. They were a covering over our facility, uh, Heart of Hannah and Traverse Rest. And, and I have been ordained through their ministry. And I tell you, they are, they're just people that will, I was telling Mary coming over tonight that you all, you didn't know anything about me, but you said, what do you need? What do you need? You know mm. what? Not everybody does that. Right. Not everybody does that. And I'm so thankful for you all and what you mean to me. Thank you. It was a privilege to be with you and to help in any way we could because we so esteem your character, yeah. watch your giftings, and then watch the way you poured love out on people was extraordinary. Thank you. The yes. amazing results that uh, yes. Narvis would get with these uh, ladies. I mean, yes. such a high success rate. 
Yes. Changing yeah. their lives and lasting yeah. fruit, you know. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. We want to be a part of that. That's what we said. What Amen. do you need? We want to get in on this. And, mm -hmm. you know, I still stay in contact with them. I love Facebook because <laughs> you can stay in contact with people yes. that you don't see, right? Mm -hmm. And so even after 17 years of having the place, I stay in contact with them to find out how they're doing, Wonderful. you know. And, you know, some of them have slipped up and and fallen but you know i say pick yourself back up that's right pick yourself back Face up it, because we all <laughs> finish, finish. <laughs> we all yeah. fail sure. at times mm -hmm. and we have to pick ourselves now back up. narvis yeah. you started uh your aglow your first meeting last month didn't you we did i was there i'm yeah. telling you it was good it was it was packed out mm -hmm. dr rebecca is you that would right have been so I proud of this wait, young lady. Yeah. and uh <laughs> oh. Tell them who's going to be there tomorrow night. And I think we have a graphic of them. Yeah. That too. Okay. Uh, Doctors John and Rebecca Polis are mm -hmm. going to be there tomorrow night. And you don't want to miss that. It's right. uh, the Easily Aglow. And it is at South and West Venue, 109 First Street in Easley, South Carolina. If you know anything about Easley, you know where Robinson's Funeral Home is. <laughs> it's across <laughs> the street from there. And so... Uh, it's going to be good. We're expecting great and mighty things and know that yes, God's God. just going to do something yeah. powerful yes, there tomorrow night. I know that when he's there, yes. things always happen. Mm -hmm. Miracles yeah. always so happen. So tomorrow night at a glow. Y'all yes. don't want to miss tomorrow 630. night. 6.30. Yeah, 6.30. Yeah. We're going to fellowship and then get started around You're going to be singing too, oh, aren't I, you, Mary? I guess. Y'all can yeah. come <laughs> see Dr. John and Rebecca yes. speak and mom sing. Yeah, yes. we're going to have a good time. Good time. And I just, Amen. we've we've got about uh, four or so minutes left. I, I wanted to tell about our, before, before we get into that, I wanted to tell who won. Oh, okay. We had a winner of the Victorious book. Her name is Betty Yay. from uh, right. Georgia. Nice. Wow. That's great. great. And my cousin, Aaron, Aaron uh, Hinton. I haven't heard oh. from him, and I don't know when he's called in here tonight. Oh. Been years since I've talked to you, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> and he says it's his birthday today. So happy birthday, Aaron. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we've had a lot to call in here, and a lot of prayer requests too, Dr. Yeah. John. And we've had prayer requests request on Facebook as well. And I would just like you to take the last couple minutes here before we pray okay. to just whatever you feel on your heart, speak to those. Maybe they don't know Jesus as their yeah. personal you Savior. Your Maybe camera. Okay. something that um, you can just encourage them with tonight. Right. Well, you know, Jesus came to save us from our sin and all the consequences of sin. Mm -hmm. Every bad thing that happens in our life is a result of sin. And Christ came to deliver us from sin and its consequences. So whatever you're facing, when you accept mm -hmm. Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, you're free. You, you know, you're free from the moment you're saved, That's and right. you just need to know it. That's why it's so important then to get into the Word of God, get your mind renewed, yes. and walk into freedom. Jesus said this, and here's, I believe, something God is, really wants to speak to your heart. He said to those who believed, if you continue in my Word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And the people he was talking to didn't really know what the model of freedom was. What was the reference point? What's it mean to be free? Jesus was speaking about himself. He said, if you become a, my disciple, you'll be free because I'm free. And Jesus walked as a free man from sickness, disease, poverty, all the works of the devil, sin. He lived free because he was born free. And when you're born again, you're born free. And if you continue to follow Jesus, you will continue to learn and walk and grow in that freedom until you walk as free as Jesus on planet Earth. So that's an exciting thing. If you don't know him, all you have to do is just say, Jesus, be Lord of my life. I need you. I repent of my sin. I'm done with my old life. Give me your life, that new life. Make me a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. And earlier I heard God is healing stomach problems. And there's even, I, I just keep hearing this, there's a cancer problem, okay? Maybe it's in its early stages, but God's healing that right now. Heart disease, someone who called in with a heart problem, God's healing that heart problem right now. There's an aorta and a valve issue, and God's healing that. You're not going to need to have open heart surgery. Jesus is your healer. Amen. There's also some mental torment that God's releasing from you right now. 
just agree with God. He says, you're free, you're free. Yep. Just say it, say it. That thing is leaving you right now in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Yes. And I know that you've, you know, the Lord brought you a long way, both of you, mm. and has changed Thank and you. turned your life around sure to minister to others. So don't ever feel like, oh, I'm too deep. I can't, I can't get out of this. He's, mm. he's not going to have me. He has you right where you're at. Right. You don't have to change or do anything different because he loves you where you're at today, right now. So um, we just want to pray over our viewers. Dr. John, yes. um, would you just pray? Sure. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everyone that's viewing right now. Lord, you are here. You are Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is there yes. with every viewer. Touch their life, Lord. Break every yoke, Lord. Let sickness and disease flee from them now. Let poverty spirits be broken from their life right now. Father, let, let there become a release of a fresh grace and anointing on every viewer's life. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Give them that beautiful new language right now as they just start to say, thank you, Jesus. May they be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. to our 9 o'clock hour of Nightline. I'm Mary Sloan along with my daughter, Tony Suchka. What a great first hour we had. I know, had. that went by fast. I know, where did the time go? We said that they were a well, right? <laughs> and they are just deep well of the knowledge of God and just had so many good things to well, say. Well, they've been all over the world to many nations and, uh, you know, they got a lot to talk about, Tony. They've and we're talking so about Dr. John and Rebecca yes, Polis. Dr. John and Rebecca Polis. But I'm excited about our guest in this mm -hmm. last Half yes. hour, we have uh, Jerry and Stephanie Blassengame. Yes. So we are going to be talking with them about his book and their ministry. Um, and we've got a lot of people on Facebook watching. Uh, Pat Brock from Atlanta is watching. Hey, My friend Rachel Sack is watching. Just tuned in. <laughs> hey, Rachel. We love when people tune in on Facebook because look, Sandy Connor's watching. That's my cousin. And she doesn't live around here, so it's a great opportunity right. to, to tune in Sharon, and watch Sandy. from all over the world. So we appreciate you guys. We would love to hear um, what the Lord's doing in your life. You could send Amen. us a message or call in. We have prayer partners back there ready to take your call. Yes. And we have another giveaway um, in this last half hour of Jerry Blassengame's book, Reclaimed. So I'm excited to hear more about that. He had a book signing this week with this book. I think it was at Furman, wasn't it? Furman. And Narvis has been harassing me, <laughs> but she didn't know I was already in touch with them about having them. She keeps sending me these messages. I'm like, relax. They're already scheduled to be on. <laughs> Stephanie's my friend. I got this. So um, anyway, but I'm going to read our scripture that we have tonight as well. It's Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, and it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And you know, Dr. John talked about how we fight against these things. First, we face our battles, then we fight our battles, and then we have victory over victory. them. We finish, the finish strong through the Holy Spirit, that the authority mm. of the Holy Spirit that He's given us and the knowledge um, through the Word of God. I know, that was so, so good, yes. And we also have Jackie Christofferson here tonight who is going to be singing another song. But let's get to our guests, Jerry and <laughs> Stephanie. Come on, y'all. Let's give them a hand. Thank you guys for being with us tonight. Thank y'all for having us. So nice to um, finally. I know we went back and forth for a little bit because mm -hmm. you were out of the country some. And yes. so I'm glad we, we got it worked out for you guys yes. to be with us tonight. Yes. Um, let's tell our viewers a little bit about them both. Mom, why don't you share a little bit about Stephanie? Okay. Or kind of both okay. of them. Jerry and Stephanie Blassingham have been married 21 years. Now, is that correct? That's that is correct. correct. <laughs> <laughs> we were all four years with, their, with Dr. Johns, but they've been married 21 years and they have six children. She and Jerry are the co founders of Soteria Community Development Corporation, a nonprofit that has been in existence for 20 years. That it, assist men and women with their transition from prison to productive citizens within society. And uh, I know you're involved in many, many things, Stephanie, and um, you're a mentor, a leader in your community. Yes. And um, Jerry is an executor director, and make sure I'm pronouncing this right, Soteria yep, Community Development Corporation. He endeavors to empower individuals in the community through education, affordable housing, financial literacy, community and economic development, and in entrepreneurship. Those are all great things to educate yeah. on. Yeah. His passion is assisting individuals who have been incarcerated through reentry and helping them become productive citizens. And one of his recent accomplishments, including being self-published author, of his memoir, Reclaimed, Jerry is also a social entrepreneur who believes in social enterprise for the nonprofit sector. He attended Columbia International University while serving a 20-year prison sentence. He was paroled in 1999 after serving three and a half years. Jerry has continued to fight for change in legislation since he was granted a pardon in 2004. In 2015, he was certified as a re-entry specialist from Wheaton College. Wow. I mean, when I read that, I was like, hold on, let me go back and read that again. I did not even realize this about you. I'm so excited to hear more about um, your testimony. So tell me a little bit about your salvation, how you came to know the Lord. Well, I found Jesus in the Greenville County Detention Center. Amen. amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> a lot of I, people do. Huh? Yeah, I was um, I, I was hating God. I, I hated God growing up. I didn't I didn't believe God existed. My mother was murdered when I was five years old, and I never met my dad, so I didn't think God existed. And uh, I was in the Greenwood County Detention Center, awaiting trial. And I remember my sister, who um, had told me one day I was on, I was on the corner selling drugs, and she came out to me and she pointed. In my face, she said, you're going to be a Christian one day. You're going to be a preacher. God is going to do something great in your life. She prophesied it. So I'm sitting yeah. in the Greenwood County Detention Center, and I'm hearing those words. She spoke life into me. Mm -hmm. And um, one day I asked the preacher to pray with me in the uh, Greenwood County Detention Center, and I, he led me to the Lord. And I haven't been the same. It's been over 26 years ago. He changes you, doesn't he? Yes, he Makes does. Makes you a different yeah. man. Yes, from the inside out. <laughs> So how did uh, Soteria, is that correct, get yes. started? Well, I was, while I was serving my time, God just began to download. I would get up in the morning at 4.30, 5 o'clock. I would pray, read my Bible and journal. And I knew I needed help when I got out. So I started writing the vision while I was in prison. Habakkuk 2 says, write the vision down and make it plain mm -hmm. so that those who read it may run with you. And so as I began to write, people would see it. And this beautiful woman saw it as well. And uh, so we just started planning while I was in prison. So for three and a half years, every day, I wrote and planned. And by the time I was released, it, we started. 
Well, what does it mean? What does soteria mean? Soteria is the Greek word for salvation. Uh, perseverance, that that. <laughs> yeah. safety, yeah, deliverance, yeah. oh, deliverance wow. from, from the Deliver. molestation of the enemy. Wow. <laughs> and restoration. Wow. Well, you know, it's a catchy word. It, it makes is. people ask you what it's yes, all about. Yes, exactly. What so I means. get a chance to, to witness uh, when right. people ask me about it. Right, good witnessing yeah. tool. <laughs> now, were you two together when, or did you meet after you were, came out of prison? Or how, what did that look like? Uh, we, <laughs> well, we actually met before both of us were saved, so it was, okay. it was before he went to prison. So you so. came to know the Lord kind of to, at the same time together? Well, not necessarily. No. <laughs> no. Tell oh. me what you got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my virgin's always better than his. <laughs> so when, um, when he was incarcerated, we reconnected. We separated for a while, and then we reconnected. And so he started writing me letters. And to this day, I still have all of those letters. And he was such a Christian that every letter was, I beseech you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm like, ah, oh, why can't we just like talk about the weather? Why is this or how not a love letter? Yeah, about how, how much you love me. You. <laughs> right. So, um, so I just would, you know, read that part and close the letters up and just, you know, put them off. And then one day um, his brother asked me to go with him to visit him. And because I really thought it was just jailhouse religion. And so once I actually, you know, was able to lay my eyes on him, I saw that it was real. And mm -hmm. so once I got back yes. home, I was like, I want what you have. So you could see kind of, you know, a physical change like in his appearance, that yeah. something was different. Yeah. He had, he had a glow about him even though, you know, he was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. But there was a big difference um, from the man that I, you know, I came to know and love yeah. and um, after that I love just kind of grew deeper in a different that's, way. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. The Lord works in mysterious yeah. ways, does he <laughs> not? Yes. Yes. So tell us a little bit like what does re-entry look like? Well re-entry is the process when somebody gets out how to reintegrate back into society. You know the the worst thing is to be able to get out from prison and not be able to find a house. Um, mm -hmm. Can't find a job no education. There are 45,000 collateral consequences that causes people not to be reintegrated. Things like can't get in a house, um, employment, barred from employment, um, things like not being able to get a license uh, for a certain field that you're in. Nurses can't get licensed. So we help people. We ease that road. Um, we go and we help with employment. We have employment training. We have a 16-bed facility in Traveler's Rest where people can live. Uh, we don't charge them until they get money. And so uh, we, have, we feed them. We get them clothes. So that is the reentry process. It's like taking a newborn baby and teaching them how to walk again, um, you know, buying them clothes. So that's what we do. And, um, you know, so it's, a, it's just an easier process for people. Did you feel that, like, when you had your reentry, that it was difficult for you and then the Lord impressed on you just like, I want to make this different oh, for other people. Most definitely. Well, I knew before I got out that it was going to be hard because that was my second time being in prison. And the first time I only did four months. But I had talked to other guys in prison who had been in three and four times. And their story was I couldn't find a job when I got out, so I had mm. to go back to do what I was doing. Wow. My mother lived in Section 8 housing, and I couldn't live with her. So I had to go do something to make sure I put a roof over my head. It's like you're free to go, but you got no road to go down. Exactly. Wow. wow. Yeah. What an amazing ministry yes. that you have now in Traveler's Rest. So, mm -hmm. um, what's the difference between a pardon and an expungement? That's a great question. <laughs> so, a pardon supposed to mean that your record is forgiven. So, when you get a pardon, your record should be wiped away where nobody, um, you know, you're forgiven where you see it. An expungement is uh, pretty much the same thing. Now, South Carolina, it's it's a little different because before we got a new law changed, um, no felonies were expungible in South Carolina. So it was only misdemeanor charges. But just in um, December of 2018, we just got the first expungement law passed where you can get a felony expunged, meaning that if you go to, you know, to prison for, you know, some, you know, a lot of years, you know, so that's kind of, you know, with a sponge, your record is gone. It's sealed where no one can ever see it. And you can go 
and fill out an application and you can actually say, I've never been incarcerated. Because, That's expunged. Yeah, because That's nobody expunged. can see your record. It's expunged. In South Carolina, a pardon is not expungible, meaning that your record, mm -hmm. somebody can still see your record, but you, it'll say pardon on it, but, you know, people can still and see so it. And so those that have turned their life around, changed their life, can re-enter with that mm -hmm. now. Exactly. And not have that against them as they're trying to restart a life with getting a job right. or, you know, um, anything like that. Yes. So, wow. That's great. Yeah. Um, and tell us the name of, is the name of the place in Traveler's Rest, is that which, the Soteria? Yes. It's called Soteria House. Soteria House. Yes. Yep. And that's kind of the connection we have with my aunt. Yep. Yes. And we'll have her over here in just a few minutes mm -hmm. to Narvis Heart. Narvis Heart. So uh, she kind of handed the baton yes. in a somewhat of a different way, but still in the same way of helping those mm -hmm. in need Almost right. to get back on their feet. Yeah. Right. So what an incredible ministry. Yeah, thank you. I love thank it. You. Um, we are going to, we have Jackie Christofferson, and she is going to sing another song for us, and it is called Broken. <laughs>
Well, we've been talking to Jerry and Stephanie Blassingame about their just their testimony of how they came to know Christ, and it's pretty amazing. Yes. Um, he, if you're just joining us, he spoke about um, he was selling drugs, and he went to prison for a 20-year sentence and did not serve the whole sentence and was released, but now he has a ministry to where he helps those that have re-entry into society of what to do next because sometimes people go through that same, it's a circle they go through. They head back to prison because they, they don't know what to do when they get out and uh, they go back to selling drugs. And his new book is called Reclaimed wow. and he's going to share on that. And if you heard him speak at all in our last segment, then you know you're going to want to get this book. Um, so right now we're going to give one away <laughs> to our first caller for Jerry Blasting Games book, Reclaim. So call in. We have prayer partners back there. Tell them you're calling in for the book and give them your name and address. And we'd yes. love to hear who gets that. But um, I'm just so excited to hear more about this. Now, Jerry, what really inspired you to write a book and name it Reclaimed? Well, my, my life story, I'm, I've been giving my testimony for 20 years. Oh. And, you know, I was thrown away. Um, society threw me away. You, you, you know, you're gone, you're in prison, you can't get a job, nothing. And I realized that Jesus reclaimed me. He took me back. And so a few years ago, we started a reclaimed wood business. We would go, at first we started doing recycling. We would take paper, plastic, and aluminum. And people like, they thought we were crazy. Why are you doing it? And we started making money off trash. I like that. And then, <laughs> then we started tearing down old buildings and barns and using the wood to build furniture, beautiful reclaimed wood furniture, farm tables, barn doors. And, and some of the men would come in and they would say, this is exactly what you're doing with us. Society threw us away and you're taking us, giving us Jesus. Wow. You're giving us clothes. You're feeding us. You're making us whole right. again. You're reclaiming us. So what has been thrown away for no use and what we take and reuse it is reclaimed. You make me want to cry I'm telling <laughs> and rejoice. <laughs> so that, my story, that's, that's my story. That's all of our stories. Even if you yes. haven't been to prison, you yeah. have been reclaimed yes. Amen. from the grips of the enemy. Yes, yes, yes. And you yes. went through some childhood trauma as well. Yes. Um, which may have led you to the lifestyle that you had. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so my mother was murdered when I was five years old. It was January 1973, and uh, she was planning my sixth birthday. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. And uh, one night I was back playing in my bedroom, my brother and I, and I heard fussing and cussing and fighting, and I put my eye to the keyhole, and I heard somebody say, boy, you better leave it before you see something you don't want to see. And I began to run back in the living room with my grand parents were and I heard two shots mm -hmm. and the next morning we found out that my mother was was murdered Goodness. Oh wow! and I haven't even you know I wasn't even in first grade yet so that was one of the biggest memories that I had and and I was an adult when I realized that I grew up with PTSD I didn't even realize it mm -hmm. you know no one sat me down I never had a counselor school counselors never came to me it just I just you know got my way through it you know the best way I could through you know at nine years old I got hooked on pornography I heard my first, had my first drink when I was nine years old. And so I spent my childhood and early childhood drinking and drugging to ease the pain of something I didn't even know I had. Yeah. So little by little, all that stuff caught up with you and you landed up in prison. Mm -hmm. huh? How effective do you think that prison system is? The, the prison system is not effective at all. It's, it's punishment, it's security. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not rehabilitation. Uh, it's, it's punishment. Right. And, if it were, and if it were not for mm. Christians coming into the prisons, prison fellowship, mm -hmm. Kairos prison ministry, churches that come and do worship services, I would not be here. <laughs> I would not be wow. here. It was, it, it was the saints that came in and preached Jesus every week and literally daily, you know, mm -hmm. ministries came in. And so if, 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 you're, if you're doing prison ministry and you're out there, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much so you for what you're doing. So you think the church plays a big part in oh, yeah. coming into the prison, helping to reform it. More, they don't, uh, That's the most help they get in Reformation. Well, yes. it turned your life around. Yes. You're sitting here helping those 
and the re-entry. And speaking of that, you know, you have Soteria House mm -hmm. where you now have 11 people mm -hmm. and you have 16 beds. Mm -hmm. And you take these men and you help them reclaim yes, their life exactly. and re-enter into society. And it's free until they can get on their feet. Right. And you came about, I'm sure this ministry was in your heart, mm -hmm. but the physical building came about through my Aunt Narva's heart, <laughs> who had Heart of Hannah, which she did the same thing with women. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> you just... I'm going to bring it, that baton it, up. Use a relay <laughs> race. It's a relay. And it know? was like a bittersweet thing yeah. in that we saw hard of Hannah go, but the sweet and good thing was that you just came right along mm -hmm. and took it over and kept it going. Yeah. And you it's know, going great. Tony, 18 years ago, I think it was, Jerry and I got together, and we uh, we were going to the same church. And so we got together, and we... We were making some plans for the community or whatever, and we had that meeting. There was something about him that I really liked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I remembered him. And, you you know, two years ago, uh, he bought the place in April April 15th, uh, two years ago. And uh, But I was going up Highway 25, and I was going to a real, realtor, to see, because I was, you know, I was having problems. I'd been in the hospital with double pneumonia and sepsis, and and um, and I just couldn't hardly go. I thought I would ne I thought God was through with me, and I just I had no energy, anything. And I said, God, what do you want me to do? I love this place. I love what I do, and and. Um, and I said, are you through with me here? Because there's seasons and times for everything. And the Holy Spirit just spoke to me as I was going up Highway 25 and said, call Jerry, bless him. And you God. called me right there. And yes, and I knew that I was supposed to call him. I got mm -hmm. back, went back to the office. I called him and um, it went to his voicemail. He called me back and he said, well, I can't come today, but can I come tomorrow? And I knew it was a God thing, and God just started working it all out. And I am so thankful for the work that you do there. Amen. And because that was my heart, I said, I want to make sure that something's carried on Amen. here when I leave here. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's funny. We were both tired because I was tired too, and I was getting ready to, I'm out of reentry. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm tired. <laughs> and when she called me, I was like, all right, Lord, if it's you, you have to get yeah. the money because we didn't have the money to purchase right. that building. Mm -hmm. and, oh. and in six months, three, three to yeah. six months, yeah. we raised the money to purchase the building. <laughs> wow. Amen. That, that, you know, when it's God's plan, he's going to yes. make a way. Yes. Yes. He does. And yeah. I know that there are people, we've got about two minutes, mm -hmm. and you have such an incredible testimony, and there's people may have just flipped the channel and heard what you've gone through, what would you say to them to encourage them to know that they can be reclaimed and be made into a beautiful piece that's, you know, the Lord has just redone? Well, it's all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. He is our hope. When people ask me about my book, I say my book is about hope for anybody, not for somebody who's been in prison. It's for somebody, whatever you've been going through, Jesus is the only answer. There is no other answer. Yes. Right. He is our hope. Amen. Well, I know that there are people out there that needed to hear your story. I, I needed to hear it. Yeah. I mean, it does. It gives hope for any yeah. situation, like you said, mm -hmm. not just one that, you know, like being in prison. Even I feel like it's a, a hope that even those that go to prisons and minister, mm -hmm. that maybe they've not been able to reach some mm -hmm. of the people they've been praying about yeah. Yeah. and right. knowing that there is hope. Yes. That you keep going, you keep pressing right. in, you keep right. doing what God has called mm -hmm. you to do, yes. and then He takes mm -hmm. care of the heart. That's right. And but Shelby won yeah. the book. Shelby from Greenville Amen. won his book, Reclaim. Ooh. We know when there's a, a heart transformation, then there's uh, your, yes. your uh, actions change. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for being with us tonight. Yeah. So we get a lot of prayer requests every night. we got a praise report. So... We're going to let Narvis lead us in prayer tonight. So let's just all agree for these Amen. Amen. Well, Father God, we just love you tonight. We thank you for these great testimonies that we've heard. We thank you that you have uh, just brought Jerry back from years ago, 
of all the pain and the suffering that he had gone through as a child and and you've done a new thing in him and oh I'm just so thankful for great and mighty things that's going to come forth. I thank you for the viewers tonight, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Father God, those that are sick, Lord Jesus, that you touch their bodies, those relationships that need to be mended, Lord Jesus. I pray for those, those drug addicts, alcoholics, those that are getting out of prison, Father God. Let them know that yes. there is hope that for them, yes, that you have a work for every one of us, a purpose and a plan for every one of us, and it's good, yes, it's not yes. evil. So we just call this done, we call it complete, yes. decree it and declare it, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. amen.